The lady behind this other lady, can you move over one seat? Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Welcome to uh, another lecture on physics. Uh, let's talk about uh, one of the classic physics problems, which is the catapult. Okay, and this is related to one of your homework problems in which a flower actually launches a spore through this catapult type of action. But let's go back to the sort of medieval notion of a catapult, which I think is kind of cool. All right, so what does a catapult look like? Well, usually they put it on wheels so they can drive it around to various places. There's a big arm here that has some sort of bucket on the end, and in that bucket they put a big item like a cannonball which they are going to launch by rotating this catapult through a various angle okay. and let's define that angle as theta. So we're all sort of familiar with this medieval idea of the catapult. Let's see if we can analyze the torque involved here. What is the torque that we need to make this catapult do this? And let's give some other parameters. Let's say that we're going to cover this angle theta in a time <coughs> t. Okay. And then we're going to launch this thing at a speed v. And the catapult has a length to it. We'll call it l. That's the length of that arm. Now, we also have to identify some masses involved here, right? So this is M1, this is M2, the mass of the ball versus the mass of the pole. Okay, how do we do this? Well, we're looking for torque, right? So we think back to our definition of torque. What is torque? Well, torque is you know, it's the twisting force. It's how hard are you going to rotate this thing? And we had some ideas for calculating that. One of them was force times left <coughs> arm. Okay. If you're applying a bigger force to a bigger lever arm, there's more torque associated with that. But in our case, we don't really know what that force is. Right? We know what the lever arm is, that's L, but we really don't know what the force is. There's another definition for torque, which maybe we can take advantage of, which is this. Torque is equal to I times alpha. This is the analogy of F equals MA. F equals MA in rotational kinematics, it becomes torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. And this stuff, maybe we can figure out, right? Certainly we know I. I is I of this arm plus I of the cannonball. Okay, we have two things there. We have not only this pole, the arm itself, but we have the item that we're launching. All right, and we can figure those out, right? We know what the moment of inertia of a uniform beam is. It is one third m two l squared. That's a uniform beam rotated through one end. That's the moment of inertia. And we also know what the moment of inertia of the cannonball is at the end, it is just m1 times l squared. Okay, so we know i. What about alpha? What is alpha? Alpha is angular acceleration. So anytime you hear that word <laughs> acceleration, you probably think of the kinematic equations. And there are kinematic equations in the linear case, but there are also kinematic equations in the rotational case. And since we have some information here, like angle and time, maybe there is an equation that will help us get to alpha. 
The one I'm thinking of is this, theta f equals theta i plus omega initial times t plus one half alpha t squared. All right, theta, we can call theta f zero arbitrarily, and then our theta final is how far that thing rotated. It also started from rest, right? This whole thing is tied down with a rope. They cut the rope and then boom, it goes. So omega initial is equal to two. <coughs> and now we know this, right? This is something they would give you in the problem. We know t, that's something they would give you in the problem. So we can solve this equation for alpha. What do we get? We get alpha equals two theta f divided by t squared. And so now we can tie all this stuff together and calculate the torque. So torque is equal to I times alpha, which is one third m2 l squared plus m1 l squared. All of that times alpha, which we said was two theta f over t squared. And if you know all these numbers, then you can plug it in and calculate the straightening torque, right? What is the torque to cause this thing to rotate? Now, the second part of this question says, what's the speed? How fast does the cannonball actually get launched? Let's see if we can figure that out. So let's ask the question, what is the final speed of launch of that cannonball? And maybe one way to think about it is this thing is rotating with some omega final. And if I can figure out what that omega final is, I can probably relate it to the speed of the launch of the cannonball. So let's go back to the kinematic equations. And let's think about kinematic equations for this thing right here. Omega final equals omega initial plus alpha times t. And we know omega initial, it's zero. It started at zero. And so we get omega final equals alpha times t. But we know what alpha is. We did that in the first part of this problem. It's that, 2 theta f over t squared. And now we multiply it by a t, one of those t's cancels out, and we get 2 theta f divided by t. This is your omega final. What we're looking for is v. And v relates to omega by the radius. How far are you from the axis of rotation? v is equal to omega times r. So in this case, it's going to be omega final times L, and we get two theta F over T, all of that times L. And now if you have all those numbers, you can plug it in and calculate what the final speed of the cannonball is. Let's make sure that this makes sense, okay? What it says is, if I rotate my, cat my catapult through a bigger angle, theta, it's going to be going faster at the end. That makes sense, right? If my catapult just went like this, it would launch it with some pretty slow speed. If it goes up pretty fast to this high altitude, it's going to launch it with some bigger speed. All right, that makes sense. It also says that if I do that in a shorter amount of time, it's also going to be launched faster. And this makes sense. When you see those like catapult competitions on reality TV, you guys ever seen those? They have these complicated trebuchet catapults, and they launch these giant objects like pianos. And they launch them like hundreds and hundreds of feet 
you know, like a thousand feet or something ridiculous. Okay, they do it in a very short amount of time. The faster this thing pops up, the faster it's going to be going up there. That's because T gets small, it's in the denominator, and so V gets big. It also says that you want a big lever arm L. You want to be able to have a long pole that you put your cannonball at the end of. If it swings up, everything else is the same, then it's going to be going faster at the end. Now, the downside to having a very long lever arm is it requires a lot more torque, right? Here's the torque, L squared right here. So the bigger lever arm you use, the harder it is to rotate it at that same angular acceleration. But if you can, it will be going faster at the end. All right, questions about that one? You guys can go out and build a catapult now? So really fun. We had to do a catapult experiment in uh, high school physics. And the idea was you have to launch a tennis ball a certain distance and try to hit a target and you have to calculate how much you're going to compress your thing, your, your spring or whatever you're using, and launch it and try to hit that target. And my buddy and I did this and we were able to hit the target on our first shot and fortunately our entire catapult destroyed itself after that first shot, so we didn't have to do it again. <laughs>